Hello, today is Friday, June 25th, and this is another episode of Friday 5 at 5 with Denver Public Library. My name is Lainey. I'm a librarian at DPL's Central Library, and in 15 minutes or less, we'll have you up to speed on five new titles we can't wait for you to read or listen to. Join us at 11 a.m. on July 3rd for our next Saturday matinee film chat. Critic Walter Chaw and writer and producer Kirla Janice will talk 1971's Melody. Follow the link below for registration information and a link to watch the movie for free before the event. And now on to this month's five. At number one, we have Sight Fidelity by Claire Boyles. Print book available now, ebook on Overdrive. Local author Boyle's debut short story collection tackles climate change head-on, interweaving entire histories of the American West's ecosystem, the animals who call it home, and the families who have come to love and exploit it. Set across the backdrops of rural Nevada and Colorado, these stories are intimate and quiet with many unfolding through complex internal character developments and strikingly poetic glimpses of a world in flux. In the collection's opening story, Ledgers, an ornithologist attempts to care for her ailing father while tracking and monitoring a flock of endangered Gunnison sage-grouse across the family ranch, recently sold to a local cattleman. In Alto Cumulus Standing Lenticulars, which follows a homesick mother who gives birth to her fourth child in the remains of a long-deserted mining town, Boyles pinpoints the ways place can bind and unbind us. Writing, It was possible, Ruth thought, that being from nowhere might somehow allow this baby to belong everywhere, to call anywhere home. For more story collections rooted in the West, consider The Saints of Rattlesnake Mountain, or Night at the Fiestas by Kristen Valdez Quaid. At number two this time, Ola Papi, How to Come Out in a Walmart Parking Lot and Other Life Lessons by John Paul Brammer. Available in print and as an ebook and e audiobook on Overdrive. Brammer, a Mexican American writer who runs a beloved queer advice column also called Ola Papi, presents a memoir in essays that's as warm and compassionate as it is impactful and funny. He structures each essay as an advice column type response to a fictional question about race, queerness, and various aspects of identity. In this way, Brammer shares slices of his life from his childhood in a small, rural, intensely homophobic town to learning how to live as a gay man to struggling as a queer writer in New York City. While straight columnists traditionally reply to letters about social faux pas, strange in-laws, or relationship drama, Brammer's advice seekers are as much concerned with their legal rights and social persecution as they are with hookup culture and how to fit in. His own self-doubt and concern are what make this memoir so honest, enlightening, and fresh. By confronting his limitations head-on, Brammer invites readers to do the same. A note for the reader, the book's title and cover art are meant to be subversions and reclamations of stereotypes, and once you read the book, they will make perfect sense. A couple more hilarious essay collections from queer authors to put on your to-read list, Something That May Shock and Discredit You by Daniel M. Laverie, and Here For It, or How to Save Your Soul in America, by R. Eric Thomas. Drunk, How We Sipped, Danced, and Stumbled Our Way to Civilization, by Edward Slingerland, is our third title today, available in print and on Overdrive in ebook format. Professor, sinologist, and philosopher Slingerland examines the human tendency to want to get drunk, how this act has enabled us to trust and cooperate, and why this entanglement with alcohol has, perhaps surprisingly, fostered human development. Though he certainly doesn't ignore drinking's many pitfalls, Slingerland details humanity's fondness for altering our mental state with sly humor. While defending intoxication's benefits, 
a word to the wise, you may not want to give this book to someone in recovery. Slingerland writes about agriculture, creativity, geography, and aesthetics along the way as well. Drunk celebrates tipsiness rather than sordid excess. Sip this book responsibly. In for more high-octane fun, pick up The Drunken Botanist, The Plants That Create the World's Great Drinks, or a more confessional but still unapologetic look at imbibing, Charles Bukowski's On Drinking. Next is Neon Gods by Katie Robert, print book available and on Overdrive in ebook and e-audio formats. Imagine your perfect romantic read, the flaws you want the characters to have, the moments you want them to share, the ups and downs of their courtship, and the ending that will shatter your heart. You can stop imagining and start reading Neon Gods, the first installment in Katie Roberts' new Dark Olympus series, which follows Persephone Dimitriou, a society darling who wants nothing to do with her mother's ambitions. Planning to leave the ultra-modern city of Olympus behind her as soon as her inheritance kicks in, her plans get thwarted when Zeus, yes, that Zeus, announces his and Persephone's engagement, orchestrated by Persephone's mother, of course. What starts out as a mutually beneficial deal turns sour, however, when Hades, Zeus's bitter rival, grants Persephone safe haven. Before long, the world's hottest power couple is born out of revenge. Sexy and surprisingly sweet, Neon Gods is the scandalous Hades and Persephone retelling you didn't know you were waiting for. For more mythology-inspired spice, check out The Rose by Tiffany Rice or Tom Cardamone's Lambda award-winning The Lurid Sea. And at number five, we have Their Plant Eyes, A Personal and Cultural History of Blindness by M. Leona Godin, available in print and on Overdrive as an ebook. Godin makes a passionate argument here for placing blind people at the center of their own stories. She delves into the metaphorical, biological, and societal aspects of blindness, drawing not just from history and literature, but from her own experience of evolving blindness. This book is wide-ranging, both personal and scholarly, asking sighted readers to examine the myriad ways in which our culture uses concepts of blindness as metaphor or morality tale, while simultaneously ignoring the existence of those who literally live it. The book wrestles with ideas and biases that make being blind in an ocular-centric world more difficult than it ought to be, says Godin. I hope it can help to dismantle the inspiration porn tendency to hold one blind person up above the rest and begin the exciting work of celebrating blind culture with an eye to creating blind pride. More books in the blindness and disability realm that may be of interest what to Look For in Winter, A Memoir of Blindness by Candy McWilliam, and Places I've Taken My Body, Essays by Molly McCauley-Brown. Plus, in case you missed it, check out The Twilight Zone by Nona Fernandez, available in print and on Overdrive as an ebook. The Twilight Zone is a novel set firmly at the center of the long and brutal Pinochet dictatorship that held Chile in thrall from 1973 to 1990. But it is not quite the same as other stories of this strongman's disastrous stint. I want to tell you about making people disappear, says intelligence agent Andres Antonio Valenzuela Morales in 1984 to a reporter at Cose magazine. Fernandez flushes out the fate of Morales after his defection and the fate of his victims, by mining his real life pulled from the headlines testimony and placing it alongside memories of her own childhood in Chile, peppered with pop culture references and Chilean fables. Consider Paolo Scott's Nowhere People or The Lucky Ones by Julianne Pacheco for more in this vein. And that's it for this month. Thanks for tuning in to Denver Public Library's Friday Five at Five. Check out or place a hold on these titles and a whole lot more right now at denverlibrary.org, link below, 
and be sure to tune in next month for a whole new batch of recommended reads.